Hey friends, Pastor Chris here with today's Gold Nugget from God's Word. Today we're looking at uh, the study on the fact that the King who reigns forever, um, Jesus Christ is the King who reigns forever. Uh, he came to us as that little baby born in Bethlehem, and now he's seated at the right hand of God the Father. Um, and today we're looking at uh, some of the things in Isaiah uh, with chapter 9, verses 6 and 7. And then we're going over to the Gospel of Luke, uh, chapter 1, starting with verse number 26 and going through verse number 33. So either turn in your Sunday school book or in the Bible, and let's read this together. And uh, let me share some things uh, from the scriptures. Uh, Isaiah 9, verse 6, For a child will be born unto us, a son will be given to us, and the government will be on his shoulders. He will be named Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Eternal Father, Prince of Peace. The dominion will be vast, and its prosperity will never end. He will reign on the throne, on the throne of David and over his kingdom to establish and sustain it with justice and righteousness from now on and forever. The zeal of the Lord of armies will accomplish this. Um, every year during the Christmas season, there's some folks that celebrate what they call Advent. And that word in the Latin means the coming. The coming of um, Christ is what this is pointing to. And we have Jesus Christ who is, is born as this little baby in, in Bethlehem. And he is that child born unto us. He's that son that's been given to us. The son of not just Joseph, Joseph the earthly father, but he is truly the son of God that was given to us. And it says the government will be on his shoulders. Um, I want what that's pointing to there when it says the government will be on his shoulders is talking about the fact that the Lord himself is coming and he's putting on that royal robe. Uh, when it says the government, putting on that royal robe, the clothing that represents who he is and um, the authority that he has. When it says the word wonderful, it's talking about that supernatural, miraculous uh, wonderfulness of the Lord. He is that great counselor. Um, the ruler who would express God's wisdom in all his words and actions. He is the mighty God, which points to the deity of this ruler, the divine warrior who would fight for his people, the eternal father. Um, we as associate this term with God the Father, so this refers to the king's style of leadership. He was the son of God and the uh, the one that would lead us wisely uh, forever. Uh, he is the Prince of Peace. I love the word peace. It means to be at one with self, uh, to be at one with the Lord is what that's speaking about. Too many people in the world are just, they're just torn apart, uh, but to be at one with the Lord, that's what it's talking about, to have peace there. And so, all this is, is prophesied in Isaiah, and then 800 years later, it's been eight centuries, 800 years later, Luke chapter 1, verse 26, we see it says in the sixth month, the angel, that word angel means messenger, uh, the angel Gabriel was sent by God to a town in Galilee called Nazareth to a virgin engaged to a man named Joseph of the house of David. The virgin's name was Mary. The angel said to her, came to her and said, Greetings, favored one. That, that word favored one means to be uh, a person that's found grace. So Mary has found God's grace. It's been, been given to her. Uh, meaning she's saved. She's one of God's children. I'll see her someday in heaven and meet her uh, face to face. But uh, the 
the angel said, Greetings, favored one, the Lord is with you. Verse 29 says, But she was deeply troubled by this statement, wondering what kind of greeting this could be. What that verse 29 is telling us is that even though she had been graced, she still battled this earthly thing that we all battle, and it's that word sin. That word sin means to miss the mark. I always used to love, I always love to use the imagery of an, uh, an archer trying to hit the bullseye. And folks, we, when it comes to that sinful nature, we can't hit the bullseye. We can't do it. The only way we can do that in the realm of the Lord is by having God the Father come alongside us and help us hit that. He, he is the one who has graced us and given us the ability to do that. And so Mary was battling this thing of sin, and when it says she was troubled by this statement, uh, it means that she was casting in her mind what manner of salutation this should be. Uh, one of the other uh, scriptures gives us those exact wordings, I believe. And so what it points to is that knowledge of good and evil. And it goes all the way back to the Garden of Eden when Eve was there. And she was looking at the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. And the serpent spoke to her and caused her to cast in her mind these things of should I partake of it or should I not? And we do that every day. We have decisions to make and instead of going to the Lord and talking to Him about it, we rationalize things in our own minds and we make reasons why to do something and why reasons why not to do something. And folks, the, the answer is always going to be to go to Jesus and talk to him about it. And let him him lead and guide us. Because on our own, we're going to make mistakes. You're not always going to choose the right thing when you're trusting in yourself and casting in your mind uh, decisions that you need to make. If you just go to the Lord and surrender to him and let him lead and guide you and help you and in, in giving you direction and things, man, life would be so much easier. But... Uh, this is a picture of, of mankind here when it says that uh, Mary, she was troubled by this statement, wondering what kind of greeting this could be. Verse 30 says, the angel told her, do not be afraid, Mary, for you, you found favor with God. Now listen, you will conceive and give birth to a son and you will name him Jesus. So uh, here's the, the messenger. He's come to her. He's told her you have found favor with God and you're going to give birth to a baby and you're going to name him Jesus. Mary um, was just like us folks. Uh, I know there are some religions that pray to Mary and um, and they'll they'll repeat the the scripture which um, um, Mary full of grace the Lord is with thee blessed art, art thou among amongst women and blessed is the fruit of thy womb Jesus um, and they'll share that over and over and they'll pray to God the Father through Mary um, but folks that that's not correct um, we don't have to go through um, uh, a person called Mary, which was the son or the mother of Jesus, and I understand that. Um, we don't have to pray through her. We don't have to pray and confess our sins to a priest. Uh, but what we do have to do is go directly to the Lord. You see, when Jesus Christ died on the cross of Calvary, uh, the temple curtain, it split down the middle, which gave us that access to the Lord directly. Uh, there were times in the Old Testament when only a priest could enter into the Holy of Holies. And, and so for that reason, some believe that we still need to go to a priest today 
and confess our sins and to seek um, forgiveness. And that's not the truth. Uh, what we need to do is go directly to God the Father. You, you can do that right there in your home. Just kneel somewhere uh, and, and just confess your sins to the Lord and ask forgiveness of Him. And He is just and righteous to forgive us of our, of our sins. So, so this, this is Mary, and she's found out this information, and she's been troubled by it. But then the, the messenger said, do not be troubled. You've been one that's found grace with the Lord, and so you're highly favored. And then he goes on and tells her in verse 32 that he will be great, talking about Jesus. Uh, and that word great is not just what we as parents, I have three children, and do I think they're great? Yeah, absolutely. I, I, I love them, and um, I, know, I know they're human. I know they make mistakes, but uh, if you ask me if I think my children are great, I'd say absolutely. They're great. They're great human beings. But this is pointing to uh, an infinite greatness. Uh, it's beyond what we as human beings can ever can ever reach. And so it says he will be great and will be called the son of the Most High. Now that term, Most High, was reserved only for God himself. And so when it says he will be son of the Most High, it's telling Mary that you're going to have the son of God. Uh, and the Lord God will give him the throne of his father, David. Um, God promised King David. He said, your house and kingdom will endure before me forever, and your throne will be established forever. Second Samuel 7, 16 is where we find that. And so the Lord has give the, given this promise to Mary and told her that he is going to give him the throne of his father, David, and he will reign over the house of Jacob forever, and his kingdom will have no end. Um, the commentary here says Jesus would rule over Israel, but it wouldn't stop there. He was the one who spoke creation into existence, Colossians 1.16. And, and as the resurrected Lord, Jesus would sit at God's right hand. So... This is giving us this understanding that he will rule over the house of Jacob forever and his kingdom will have no end. So folks, you and I as being highly favored, as being graced by God, if you're saved and you've got that gift of salvation in your life, you too will inherit someday this thing called eternal life. And you too will be there with the Lord forever because you're his child. If you have found grace, if you have found favor in the Lord and you've been saved, then you will have that as well. What a blessing that is. Um, it's a great reminder for you and I as we think about the Christmas season and uh, this study today and the King who reigns forever. I'm so thankful that when I was nine years old, the Lord spoke to me. That still small voice spoke to me, and I surrendered to Jesus Christ as Lord, Lord and Savior. I'm so thankful when I was in my 20s that the Lord spoke to me again and called me into full-time Christian service. Um, there's been many times in my life where the Lord has spoken to me in that still small voice. Earlier this year, I went away the first few days of February and just got alone with God for three days and let him speak to me, and he did. He reminded me that um, I needed personal revival in my life, meaning that if I wanted revival in my life, it, it started with a one-on-one -on -one thing with him. Um, personally in my life, and God did that. And man, what an amazing thing God's done in me and through me. I'm going away again this coming February for the first few days of that month to just spend some time with the Lord and talk to Him. 
I'm sorry my phone keeps going off. There's a group text uh, that probably with the choir, we're going Christmas caroling tonight, but um, if I can encourage you to just get along with the Lord, let Him love on you, let Him speak some truth into you, uh, whatever you're burdened with, I pray you just give it to Jesus. Uh, I pray you have a Merry Christmas and that God blesses you this season. There's a lot of people out there hurting, and I realize folks are trying to find Christmas. Uh, can I encourage you to to realize that Christmas is not in all the stuff, it's not in the parties, it's not in all those things that uh, the world provides us to celebrate Christmas. But Christmas is truly found in Jesus Christ and getting alone with Him and spending time with Him. He will speak to you and He will bless you. Uh, I pray you'll take all those things to heart and, and spend some time with Jesus this Christmas. God bless you. Have a great rest of your day. I'm going to turn my phone off. And then I'll uh, call that person back. It was my wife. Um, let me pray with you. Father, I thank you, Lord, for this day. And I thank you for every person that uh, has watched this video. I pray you bless each person with a great Christmas, Lord. Realizing that our joy is not found in things. Um, uh, but... Father, our true joy is found in a relationship with you. Uh, Lord, I pray that you would just bless every person today and give them uh, love this season. Father, you give them peace this season. And we embrace, Lord, you as our Father. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Hey, I want to invite you. Christmas Eve service here at Benton's Crossroads will be at 6 o'clock. And would love to have you come out. It'll be a candlelight service. We'll also celebrate communion and uh, have some singing. And I'll share uh, a short message. Uh, would love for you to come out. Six o'clock, Benton's Crossroads Baptist Church. And uh, we'd just love to have you be a part of that. Um, also, the day after Christmas, Sunday morning, we'll be here at 11 o'clock. And would love to have you join us and uh, be a part of our worship service on Sunday morning. Our children will be singing this week, and they always do a great job, and we look forward to that. So have a great rest of your day. Merry Christmas.